So the Santa Claus rally is here at last as we head into the end of the year, which is traditionally the most bullish time of the year. If you guys are excited for the Santa Claus rally, throw it in the comments section down below as we got some interesting data on Thursday and as we head into this wonderful Friday close. So today we're going to be talking about the data portfolio, how it's been going, NVIDIA earnings, talk about Google, talk about Amazon, Tesla. It's going to be a jam pack one, your favorite thing in the world, Bitcoin, because I think it just hit price target that I said was going to be Q2 of next year. It was hold my beer. I want that. Now it wanted Santa Claus to come in clutch for it. Bitcoin hitting nearly 100K. That was absolutely a milestone. We're going to be talking about where it could be going next and subsequently how you guys could have profited off the weekend deep dive level. So make sure you guys, if you missed that one, are subscribed to the channel so you know when that video comes out. But without further ado, let's talk about what happened on Thursday. Fed Philly Manufacturing Index basically came in contraction territory again. As we stated, they're gonna start publishing the real numbers. However, I can't believe I'm actually saying this. I agree with Jerome Powell and that is that the market is extremely resilient. Maybe not the economy, but the goddamn stock market is a juggernaut right now. Nothing can take it down. I actually got spooked out of the portfolio a little bit today. I reinitiated a bunch of those positions almost an hour later because as the market was falling and Google gave me a black eye today, along with Amazon, I was like, okay, I just, Nvidia didn't play out the way I wanted to. So, but I re-entered that one, so I'm, I'm okay with that position, right? And kind of playing around with something with a cover call on it. I'll show you guys that later in the video. But again, I want to see how this all plays out. I want to be a little more conservative, especially seeing how the market's been chopping around. But then again, the close today really reinvigorated my bullishness in the market. And we'll be showing you exactly what I was seeing. So existing home sales coming in good. So again, housing crash, as everyone has been saying over and over, all these famous YouTubers, Graham Stephan <coughs> uh, has been saying about a housing crash, then subsequently we're not getting it. There's no data right now. We had about two month period. And I said, wait for the data to come out. And the data came out and we were saying, okay, this is starting to look like it's a little concerning, but housing data basically came in and it's like, okay, lower, high, lower, uh, sorry. Uh, higher low, higher low, higher low. And I'm like, where, where's the crash? Where, where's the straight line down? Again, please someone point out where the straight line down is. But again, we got some other Fed members talking about, again, rocked a little bit of the expectations, 57.42. Right now, the December rate cut expectations aren't the most important thing. It's gonna be the summary of economic projection. That's going to be the number one most important thing because that's gonna project us into what the Fed is thinking for 2025. Right now, if we jump over to December, we can kind of see the current rate, the consensus is only about three to four rate cuts of 25 basis points. So we could get more vigorous rate cuts as we head into the year, but we really need to see the SAP match up to this in order to basically give a little bit fervency. And I would really love to see maybe they stretch it into the territory of four rate cuts and five, right? There's, there's a drop off in the percentages there. But subsequently, let's see how this all plays out as the Fed will be reporting it out on December 18th. As I mentioned, the greediness is here and back at last. With the fear and greed hitting 58, we got all this nice territory to ramble through as the market could rally led by chips. Again, chips are probably discounted extremely right now. So take a look at some of those companies. We're gonna be talking about NVIDIA and AMD in just a moment. But again, what was really, really sad news, and I'm just gonna digress for a second, is that the US knew about the ballistic missile strike on Ukraine prior to it happening, and we did absolutely nothing. Okay, that's your global news for today, but let's go back to Apple. Apple basically slides 4%, actually was down almost 7% at a time. I got spooked out of my positions, re-entered uh, the 200 day moving average. So again, we're gonna see how this all plays out, right? You can't win them all, but you, uh, sometimes it just market punches you in the face. And that's when you really find out if you have a plan. I didn't have a really good one, guys. So I got a little bit creamed, but we'll see. I kind of composed myself and I was okay afterwards and kind of got back into it. But basically, for all those that don't know, Google got a ruling against it that has to basically has an illegal monopoly on search. So they have to find a way to basically unmonopolize. I personally say just break the company in two and call it a day. But the Justice Department basically said to ban them completely from search for the next five years, which would be a crippling thing for the business. And subsequently the stock reacted 
very, very negatively. Uh, this thing was down uh, just for sakes of argument. This thing was down like seven and a half percent, basically on the close. And we got well, number one. We were having a bull signal the day prior, so I was like confident in this position. And then this happened. So again, catalysts are going to happen. But Google did something very, very interesting. Subsequently, it actually came down to the 200-day moving average, bounced off it perfectly, regained the 50. So we basically took out this section of buyers right here, which allows us to basically consolidate sideways. I would love for Google to consolidate sideways. I don't want one of these V-shaped recoveries as I would welcome it, but I really want us to consolidate in this area because if you look, this is an area where there was a lot of consolidation of buyers. So there's people able to buy the stock again at this level and thus, we're gonna basically be looking at, okay, this is an interesting buy point accumulation, kind of play out some of that theta. And then we can roll to the upside as we have that Santa Claus rally. Again, I'm looking to basically take these positions and keep rolling them to gain that theta as we get the Santa Claus traditional rally that starts around Thanksgiving. Again, we're heading into the next week, which is gonna be a low volume week considering as a holiday week and a shortened week. So you gotta keep those things in consideration. But the S&P and NASDAQ both did fantastic, right? We can look at the levels and you would know from the levels that you would need to be accumulating every single day. It was not a sell week. It was not a short week, right? Especially because we had this gap fill right here that has been sitting here for quite some time and we failed to fill that gap. So we're probably not gonna fill it. We did fill the gap to the upside finally today and it was a huge ranging candle. So there was a lot of opportunity for the bulls and the bears today. However, the bear, the bulls won, got above the nine day moving average. Now we need to see, can we subsequently for the next several weeks, advance, 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 advance. And that's why I also am most likely going to increase my position today in S&P and NASDAQ uh, to do a setup on it. That which is basically a, bull, a bullish uh, put spread that I'm gonna be doing credit spread on it. And I have one on the S&P and the NASDAQ, two contracts open for each. And subsequently, I may make it three just because I'm looking at this. I'm like, hey, I like where this is happening. If we get a gap down on open again, gap down maybe to a 590 and we run up, that's where we're going to be seeing. But really, you want to see how close we get to 600 on the S&P and the NASDAQ, a similar story, right? Not as strong as the S&P, again, because NVIDIA and all them and Google dragged down along with Amazon did drag down subsequently the market, but NASDAQ actually hasn't filled the gap all the way. So I would expect a bullish Friday out from the markets. I would love to see, let's say a red open, we gap down, pump up, keep pumping, let's do a 2% day today on the NASDAQ. That would be fantastic, especially with the most risk on mentality asset hitting 99,000 at the time of recording this video. This thing's gonna hit 100K today because that's just, Bitcoin is gonna hit that 100K and it's a psychological barrier. For those that I've talked to in real life and then on the on this channel, I have said 100K is gonna be a psychological barrier. Let's pull back to 75K, which would be the gap fill the, or around the 50 day moving average once it does and then pound everyone's face in. So hypothetically, let's say we got a A to B pattern back down to 75. That would project us to 116. So why wouldn't you guys want that, right? A lot of people are gonna take profit because this is an outrageous run in Bitcoin, right? Massive run in Bitcoin, 48% in subsequently a matter of two weeks, massive, massive run. People are gonna start taking profit for all those that saying, oh, they're not gonna take profit at 200K and all this. The same thing happened back here, right? You hit the psychological number of 75. Hmm. And then spent over half a year just consolidating sideways. So why not? Bump your head at 100, consolidate back down to 80, let's say even the gap fill at 80, right? Defend the gap fill and then run up higher. Refuel the rocket on all those that missed out on the rally and then subsequently let's push higher. I'm definitely gonna be bullish on Bitcoin. I personally will not invest in it just because it is not suited to my investment style. However, for all those that love Bitcoin and follow this channel for the Bitcoin stuff, again, I was warning you again when we were back here to be cautious because I was seeing some weakness in Bitcoin. Election comes out, boom, and the Bob's your uncle as we're heading up higher and it was just magnificent on Bitcoin, right? So again, recapping, the Russell is one of those positions that I opened up and reopened today. It is a heavy hitter. This thing has the potential to run up, especially if small caps do well. They've been extremely undervalued. So make sure you guys check out the Russell 
along with checking out the video over here on the left for you guys to check out. That is gonna be the latest on Target, dropping 20%. Subsequently, is it a good buy? What's the fundamentals? Is it having a basically Bud Light moment or a Jaguar moment? So you guys throw it in the comment section below what you think. What are you excited for? Are you excited for the Santa Claus rally? What stocks you're looking to buy? And maybe we check out one of those stocks in the weekend deep dive, throw it in the description down below. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next one.